I don't, okay, so we're here to talk about special smiles and how they still use them. But first, let me tell you a story. It was a beautiful Saturday, Saturday morning, and I had a list full of patients, and I usually accept emergencies, and they called me that. It's like, oh my God, my child's in pain, see him now. I say, okay, okay, bring him. And as he brings him, and I see this child, I'm looking at my chart, and it's written, a six-year-old needs to come see me. But I actually see a four-year-old walking. And as he's walking, and there's something going on, funny, but the gate or something, I say, hey, but Dr. help this kid walk. Okay, but that's not it. When he comes closer, I can see the bags underneath his eyes. The closer I get, the more apologetic I see. He's pain as it can be. No one's feeding this kid. And this something on top of his neck. What's that? Is that a lymphadenal bending? Someone help this kid, please. Doesn't end there. He comes, he sits on my chair, he opens wide, and 20 out of 20, not medium, 20 out of 20 teeth are decayed. To make matters worse, the dad's like, you have 30 minutes, fix my child's tooth, I'll come back and get him. I don't have time for this. You're still gonna ask me about my child? Whatever, just get done with it. And now I'm sitting here and I'm angry and I'm frustrated and this kid has an accent, it's not fair, and I'm gonna judge you. Have you ever treated a child before where you felt the parent could have done a better parenting job? Show of hands if you did. And thanks for being super interactive with me. And this was my moment of truth. Should I actually do what he tells me? Should I just fix the kid's teeth while I have him? I have half an hour. I just do something about this beautiful kid. I know what cerebral palsy is. I know I can, I read the books. I studied the literature. I know my stuff. But do I? Do I really? I'm not the one going home with this child. I'm only the one treating his teeth. If I get this little bit of his time. What do I know? Maybe, maybe that parent couldn't be bothered and the child is all ragged and stained on his clothes while he has his Gucci shoes and Gucci belt. Maybe he couldn't be bothered and he's just so super focused on work because he can't connect with his kid. I forgot to tell you, this can't, this kid can't hear. He can't hear, he can't hear. Make matters worse. How can I fix this? I'm here to fix it. But we can. <coughs> we can. We can help children. We must help children. Not just, not just by fixing teeth, because we're not here to talk about dentistry, guys. We're here to make children happier, to make children healthier. We're here to take good care of children. And that's why we're here. And at the end of the day, this kid, if you see him now, cerebral palsy and all, all fat teeth out. He's eating, he's healthier, he's gaining weight. He's happy, he's smiling, no teeth, toothless smile. But it's a smile all the same, it's a genuine smile. And it is our responsibility, not just as dentists, actually as human, before we to look after these kids and to love them. A wise woman once said, love is the oxygen of the soul. Every kid that walks into our office actually needs a lot more of them, whether they're special or not. And now we want to know what's so special about special smiles? Let's find out. So today, we want to talk determination. We want to talk, what are the challenges of special needs children? What are their problems? How to solve it? And maybe touch base on autism, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, ADHD, just touch, touch very quickly and talk about some more behavior management, talk about prevention. And I know I promised you I'm gonna talk about prevention here more than my previous presentation. And of course, at the end, tell you about Special Olympics and ASDH. And you know